David, it is always great to talk to you again. And I understand, let's get straight to the point. You have got some very exciting news to share with everybody. Yes, uh, it's been a, a really great fall because I got informed that we got funded finally for the Specialty Crop Research Initiative proposal we put together. Now it's, it's, it's focused on sustainable rose landscapes this time around. So it includes both rose rosette and black spot. And the long-term goal is to develop sustainable rose landscapes based on cultivars resistant to these two diseases that if you look at all the polling I've done, I've done surveys several times, those are the two most important ones in the US. Rose rosette, we've been talking about that for a long time, but having something resistant to rose rosette that's susceptible to black spot just doesn't work in our gardens. So we need both. And so this award uh, gives us $4 million over four years to do some significant work. Now in our first uh, work that we did, the first proposal we got funded in 2014, uh, that sort of gave us the base information because at that time we didn't know much about Rose Rosette. We had just recently identified the pathogen and which was amazing to me because we've known about the disease for many decades. But it was, it was a difficult pathogen and the virus that they discovered was a new virus, new class of viruses actually, that were, they were just beginning to realize existed. And now recently, if you look at the literature, there's more and more of these viruses popping up everywhere. So we we're one of the first ones, good or bad, to, to discover it with, was attacking our plants. And so we discovered the basic biology, the vector, uh, the, the ways to diag the diagnostic tests that were necessary to really manage it, and some basic management procedures that we, we could use. And then some basic information about how to uh, work from a molecular point of view to accelerate the breeding of roses for this uh, resistance of, of this pathogen. And then a lot of the work was to look at uh, where are the sources of resistance, if there are any. And if you, if you look at, I have data on like 1200 different varieties of roses and very few have some resistance to this pathogen. Most will eventually get it. Some get it at different rates. So it's not, there's some things that are, we haven't seen it attack, but 99% eventually get the pathogen. Uh, but we have discovered some resistance genes. And uh, so we, we did that actually after the first project uh, ended, we got it started and then some interim funding from your, your go-to fund pages, both you and Pat with hundreds of uh, donations helped Mark and I to continue that work, Mark at the University of Tennessee and then additional funding from the American Rose Society, as well as from the, uh, the Garden Rose Council. So that has, was essential in, in getting all the work done and then getting this next project funded. Yeah, and I think the nice thing about the funding, you know, we talked about this when we first started, you know, raising funds for your guys' research, you know, two or three years ago, I think at this point, mm -hmm. was that the biggest danger was that if, you, if the project stopped, you'd have to start again. Yeah. And, and, and you'd was, lose seven or eight years worth of research and data. Yeah, and that was really important on field plots, which yeah. are both at Texas A&M as well as uh, University of Tennessee. And so, and I also like what you're doing with this too. You know, the the fact that you've expanded the black spot, I think, is a good thing. Um, you know, because you know, while rose rosette disease is in large parts of the country, black spot seems to be the, you know, the one that we all seem to get at some point. And that has become a high criteria um, to for for basically for anybody who do, who works with roses at all, you know, black spot resistance. Yeah, and so what this project does is first it focuses somewhat on the mechanisms of the rose rosette resistance that we've discovered thus far, because we need to know whether it's affecting the virus biology or the microbiology, so we can have a good idea of how to manage the resistance. And so we have uh, people working on both aspects there. And then we'll continue with the, uh, the marker work so we can accelerate the breeding. And in the breeding aspect, beyond trying to 
discover more sources of resistance and more genes for resistance. And we're doing that with both, both the Rose Rosette and the Black Spot. Uh, and in collaboration with the University of Minnesota, University of Wisconsin with uh, Stan Hokuson and David Slezak on the black spot, black spot resistance, on the dominant resistance. We're also working on um, the more quantitative resistance here at Texas A&M. So we're trying to put it all together and then put these genes, once we can identify these genes, essentially stack them into one variety. So we have something that's really resistant and hopefully stably resistant to both diseases over the long term and over geographic areas. Because the, the issue we run into with black spot is that it has different races that attack different varieties differently. And so when you work on the dominant genes, they're only giving you resistance to certain races. It's sort of a lock and key. So it's, it's got a lock for certain races, but once another race overcomes that, it has a key to get through. And so that can give you good resistance, a complete resistance to those races. But once you get a race that overcomes it, it, it's susceptible again. And then you have a quantitative resistance, which is slows down the reproduction. It doesn't necessarily uh, avoid infection, but minimizes the disease on the plant. And I think what you just said there, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think that's the key thing to, 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 for folks to appreciate what the research you're doing. It's like, you know, would we love to find a cure for rose rosette disease? And would we like to find the rose rosette disease resistant rose? Well, yes, we would, but that might not be possible. Um, but you can find disease resistance and you can find, you know, slowing it down a little bit, making it more manageable. And one of the things I think that's important about the program that you all are doing is you're also educating people that because rose rosette disease in particular has become the scary bugaboo in the gardening world. Mm -hmm. And it really isn't for those of us who have lived with it for like I have for 20 years. It's quite manageable if you know what you're doing and if you're getting factual information on it. Right. And so we're trying to understand what, what the sources of resistance do and, and how to manage them. And that's extremely important. And on the education aspect, uh, we do have a, an extension program with uh, coordinated by Kevin Ong. And there they'll have uh, demonstrations uh, of various management procedures, including varieties and, uh, and uh, uh, agrochemicals and, and management of garden design and things like that to help uh, to sort of demonstrate how to do this. And then on the economic side, we have people helping us to uh, assess the economic benefits uh, of these various uh, best management projects as well. Or best yeah, I know Mark had talked about something as simple as, as like, you know, Mark Wyndham, Dr. Mark Wyndham is barrier plants, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have like the garden behind me, that's my garden and the wind tends to blow from the fence side of that garden. So if, if I, if I put a barrier plant behind my garden, there's a chance that I'm going to, not a chance, it's actually, I'm going to lessen the amount of mites that are going to actually make it into my garden that could affect my garden with, with rose rosette disease. So a lot of little simple things <laughs> like that, that you begin to layer in. And that's what you're, that's the education aspect, which is so important out of your project as well. Yeah, and we're collaborating with people like you and, and others to try to get the information out. We just had an article in, in Grower Talks about this project as well. And so we're trying to get the information out. I'm planning to have a podcast on Rose Chat as well. Right. And uh, I'll be talking at the American Rose Society uh, annual meeting in May. Right. And so it's a report be getting out and trying to get the information out as, as much as we can. Yeah, and we'll certainly be continuing to do videos like this just because you've gotten the grant doesn't mean our uh, connection ends because I definitely want to make sure we're updating people and giving, you know, and, and updating on the research and giving practical tips and things along those lines. So David, this is great news. I cannot tell you how thrilled I personally am having gotten to know you and Kevin and Mark better over the last two or three years that you guys have gotten this well-deserved and well-earned grant. And um, I'm going to let you have the last word, because like you said earlier in the video, we did have some folks who contributed some money and uh, that sort of kept that was like bridge money, for lack of a better word, bridge funding between the two grants. And I'm going to let you have the last word and just tell just take it away. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. I think we're going to make great progress, but it would not have been possible without the funding after 
the last grant ended. So the last grant ended in 2019. And the reason at that point, we had a lot of field plots that we hadn't finished working with. And so it was essential to get some bridge money. And we did this, uh, we, we have to thank a lot of people, hundreds of people that donated to the GoFundMe program that both Pat Chanley put together and yourself. And that was a, a great help. Uh, the American Rose Society gave us uh, lots of support in the interim, as well as the uh, Garden Rose Council. They gave us support to get the, the final uh, planting of the new progenies out there, both in Tennessee, uh, Oklahoma, and Texas. So we planted, oh, about 800 different uh, rose genotypes that we'll be using to, to identify additional sources of rose rosette resistance, as well as black spot resistance. So they're, they're for both, both objectives. Thank you so much for everybody who donated and to those organizations that, that help us get through the rough times. And now we have four years of good funding and I expect a lot of things to happen. Really excited and thank you much. Well, we are excited as well, David. Good to talk to you and we will talk again, I know, very soon. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Bye-bye.